Hey there, howdy, it's me, Webweaver, and in two minutes, fate is going to be decided. In two minutes. Alright, it's still 14. In two minutes, the results of the housing, the, tw the 29th, the 28th lottery period are going to be announced. And we've put three bids on this house. And I'm going to be honest with you, I've come to like this area. I, I think this is one of the nicer areas in the goblet, and I wouldn't mind living here. So, I, uh, if we lose the house, uh, we're going to immediately be on copium and looking for another house. Uh, if there are none, then uh, we'll just be saving our money. Uh, if we win, then um, that'll be nice. Uh, what are we looking for? 10, 11, and 12. If any of those tickets are drawn, we win. Uh, if 11 is specifically drawn, that means I win. Um, so we'll, we'll do a housing rant no matter what after the results are drawn. Uh, just because, like, even if we win, I don't want to have, like, a... This is really serious for a video game that doesn't matter, but, like, a survivorship bias of, like, Hey, we did it, so housing's fine, Lamau. Um, housing is not fine. But we'll see. Uh, I'm either gonna celebrate in about 30 seconds, or... <laughs> oh my god, Novice Network, come on, man, 30 seconds, don't do this to me. Oh, don't do this to me. Alright, it's 9 a.m. It's look who it is. Alright. Alright. Oh god, I, I really don't want to look at this. This is fucked up. Oh! We fucking won! Yo, what up? It's me, coming at you live several hours later. Several hours later? Yeah, several hours later. Um, I can turn the BGM up a little bit more. There we go, that's fine. So, I didn't really explain it, because you might have seen, like, in the previous clip when it was daytime and now it's nighttime and raining. Um, the, you, you might have seen it's like, oh, you lost, better luck next time, so why did I scream and why do we have the house? It's because housing is esoteric bullshit nonsense. And so my guild, the, the guild that I run, Sirens of Leviathan on Coral, we placed three bids for this placard right here, for this house, okay? And because of that, we had three bids. And so one of our FC members was number 10, I was number 11, and one of our FC members was number 12. So, basically, when it's drawn, only one person wins, and everybody else is a loser, idiot, moron, dumbass. And so, how it worked was, um... My FC member who placed the bid for us won. And so, what you saw earlier was me picking up my refund... Oh, that's horrible. Oh, no, that's horrible. Small indie company, by the way. Oh, God. Anyways, that's, I'm gonna move that somewhere else so I don't ever have to see that happen again. But, um... Anyways... There's the housing button. Here's the housing button. This one right here. Get, get it the fuck over here. Do I have grid snap on? There we go. Yeah, it can be angled like that. That's fine. So, because my FC member won, and I lost, and my other FC member lost, we get a full refund on the tickets, and then we get the house. And here it is. It's look who it is. It is look who it is. We have the spacious first floor. Like, I mean, listen, my, the original house that we had 
was about like this size, like what you can see on my screen right now. Like it was about this size. Like imagine these pillars are walls. It was about like, and then imagine where I'm running as a wall. It was about this big. So that's a small. A medium is like half of this, maybe a little bit bigger, maybe a little bit smaller. But a medium has a basement and an attic. A small only has a basement, but this one has a second floor. Has It has a whole ass second floor. It doesn't have an attic, but it does have a second floor, and that's cool as fuck. So we've got all these spaces up here. One with the window, one with its walled off. And then we have downstairs in the basement the ideal male living space. It's been very popular so far. And yeah, this is like a huge amount of free space. And you can actually see that it inherited some of the traits that the previous house had. So we had these like crystal chandeliers. We had one of these, or actually we had two of them in the last house. And so that means that, and we had the crystal chandelier in the basement in the first floor. So that means here there's crystal chandeliers in the basement and the first floor, uh, which is pretty cool. But it also does mean that, uh, I don't know if we can see it from here, but like that chandelier is just the default one that old Da has. And the floor from the FC house is here, too. So that's pretty cool. Uh, we're going to change it because the aesthetic that we're going to go with this mansion is not going to work with these wooden floorboards. But listen, I said we would do a housing rant no matter what. I, I actually completely forgot about it. I was re-watching the footage, and I was just going to make it like a quick little five-minute video and upload it to YouTube. That would be a novelty, right? A five-minute long web video? Ha, 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 ha. Ha 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 ha. Five minute web video, yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyways, we'll hang out here. Because, I mean, we might as well. It's the only part that has a, a couch. So, and also, let me. Do I. Should I turn off the music or is it just i mean it's a banger right like it's really good like we can all agree that it's a really good song soken was cooking when he did that but anyways also let me we're, we're not playing dead we're just like lying down on the couch okay so here's the deal i will probably turn let me turn it on to a song that does not have lyrics. This one. There we go. Alright, I swear I'll actually, like, stop moving now, okay? Cool. That's a vortex couch. And then I have to do the... There we go, straight face. Okay, so, housing in Final Fantasy XIV. How does the system work? There's... It used to be you had to click on a placard for like 8 million years. And I did that, and I got our first FC house. And I really want to get that house again as my personal, but it's not up to me, because now it's up to fate. The numbers, the roll of the dice. And it's particularly bad as a personal, because... A personal user can only bid once, while well, FCs can bid multiple times. As, as many members that they have who have been in the FC for longer than 30 days, and for as much money as they have for the ticket price. So, you know, we're just, like, incredibly lucky that we got a mansion. There's only... So, we're in the Goblet. Now, the Goblet is the least desired housing zone in the game. Uh, people hate the goblet. Uh, the reason why we're, we were able to get this mansion is because... Whoops, that is the wrong button. The reason why we were able to get a mansion in the goblet is because it's the least desired location. Right? That's just... This was the second least, well, this was the least bid in the end. If 14 total bids. The house of the mansions and other locations were 
50 plus, 40 plus, 30 plus for like mansions and bad spots. So our chances as a guild that can only put up like two to three tickets, the fact that we were able to put up a third ticket is miraculous and entirely because one FC member is just simply built different. But uh, we put up three tickets and that was a miracle. Like getting one ticket required like my all my life fucking savings in this game. Getting the second ticket was like a week of grinding patch 6.3 to just like sell as many sub crafts, crafts, and gup aether sand as possible. And that was a pain. Like that was horrible, right? Like I had an FC member who he was running like fucking the Arboretum hard to get Verdant partitions so he could contribute. You know, and then other FC members who had just been playing the game, because the game gives you, like, about, like, maybe, you know, the game gives you millions of guilt from just playing the story. You know, they invested their fucking life, life savings into it, too. So it's like everybody was basically just contributing their, their whole fucking life savings and, like, working to get, like, extra guilt when they can. And we managed to get three fucking tickets, and we managed to win. And so that is a feel-good success story, right? That's actually a really good feel-good feel success story. We're a small guild, we came together, we raised the money, and then we bought a fucking mansion, which are incredibly rare, incredibly difficult to get, and they are a finite resource that they're not making more of, at least for a while. Because how the, the game works is that housing is physical. It's a physical location. If you come to Coral and you come to Ward 4 of the Goblet, you are going to see our FC house. It isn't in, well, I mean, it is an instance, but like it isn't an instanced area that a player can just spawn out of thin air, right? It's not something that you can just have it's something that the developers have to put there is a finite amount of space and then that is it that's it for the that's it that's all you get and mansions specifically are very very limited because there's only three of them per division and six of them per ward so out of the six mansions in ward four we have one of them so that just means, like, you know, my guild, Sirens Leviathan, has something that no one else can ever have until we decide we're too good for it and we move to a different one. And I, I, I want to point that out and how, like, hor horrible that is from a gameplay perspective that is a creative expression of players, right? Like, you cannot get a large house canvas to just fuck around with for fun because you can do that in elder scrolls online uh you can i think you can do that in guild wars too right i i don't think does world of warcraft have housing i haven't heard anything about world of warcraft housing but I, world of warcraft probably does it better too um it's just so like you know there are even other multiplayer games that do better housing than Final Fantasy does. Like Warframe, for instance. Warframe, anyone can build a dojo at all. And I'm peeking here, so I need to lower my own volume down just a little bit. But uh, anyone in... I don't know, raise myself up a little... Okay, that should be good, that should be good. So, in Warframe, anybody can make a dojo. You can be a guild... You can be a clan of two people. You can make a dojo... You can bust your ass, and then guess what? You have a dojo that has just as much shit as everybody else's dojo. Now, Warframe did fuck up a little bit because they had these, like, developer promotional things where if your dojo had, like, a, an influential player or a streamer or something like that, then your dojo could be given an exclusive blueprint for a weapon, and the only way people could get that weapon was by visiting your dojo. That was stupid as shit. But that's just a weapon. That's a single weapon out of hundreds. And it's just some like stupid promotional thing, right? That doesn't have anything to do with the actual instanced housing. Like in Warframe, if you want a dojo, you can get one. You and your best friend, because that's what we did. My, me and my boy, we worked and grinded our asses off to get a good 
big dojo that had all the cool shit in it, okay? We did that back in the day. and But you can't do that in Final Fantasy XIV. You can't bust your ass and get a house. It's literally impossible because there's a finite supply of them and there's, there's always a demand because there's active gameplay benefits. Now, the most gameplay benefits that you can get from a house are from a free company. Free companies can build airships and submarines, uh, although airships are complete dog and you never use them. You just build four submarines. You, you like could build an airship for fun if you wanted to and have it running alongside like a submarine because you start the game with one submarine and one uh, airship and you can only have four vehicles running at a time. You can have eight vehicles in total, but you can only have four of them actively going out. So if you wanted to, you could build an airship and have that running alongside the submarines. And then when you get four submarines, you could just replace the airship with a submarine. Um, I, I don't know. It's just not worth it, right? Like the, the airship's just too much of a pain in the ass. It, it only has one mount to it and you can just buy that mount instead. <laughs> the, the airship literally just has the one mount and that's it. And with the amount of money that submarines bring in, and we'll talk about that in a second. You can just buy them out for everybody in your guild and it's fine. <laughs> but, uh, okay. So the, the biggest gameplay advantage to having a house is obviously the submarines. Because the submarines are a system. Uh, Final Fantasy has something called a retainer system. Where you have NPCs that you can customize and outfit with gear. And they are designed to take your old gear, right? So like if you have a combat retainer that's your same class you can give them your old set when you move on to the next one and then that will level them up a tier so that they can go out and do things for you uh at that like level or whatever right um submarines are super retainers they require just a tiny bit more investment uh with fuel and repair while a retainer just requires ventures which are a really easy currency to get um so you can essentially work on these super retainers, and these super retainers make bank once they're fully leveled. If you're ever wondering why, like, if you know a free company leader, and that free company's been around for, like, you know, ever, why that person's always like, oh, yeah, no, Gil's not a, Gil's not a problem, don't worry about Gil, it's okay. If you're ever worrying about, or wondering about that, it's because they have submarines, and those submarines have been running forever. Uh, I believe the low roll for a submarine is... Did my dog just bark? <laughs> I have no idea. I had my headphones on, I was listening to the music. But, uh... Your, um... The submarines have a have a, some RNG variants, but they can bring around like a million gil back every day and i think that's like the low roll like it's potentially they could bring back even more gil and it's gil in the form of vendor trash so you just sell it to an npc and you make a million a day right so like it's one of the best passive gil farming methods and it's just easy and you don't even have to interact with the market board at all you don't have to interact with other players also, while your submarines are bringing back this gill, like this vendor trash, they're also bringing back exclusive submarine materials that can't be put on the market board, but you can still trade them to other players. So you can get, like, enough of these submarine resources that people need to, like, build stuff, and you can just sell them for hundreds of thousands. Like, and here's the thing. Depending on where you're putting up, like, your advertisement, there might not even be, like, competition, right? Like, if you're in a submarine discord and there's, like, a bunch of people who are listing prices for stuff, okay, yeah, you gotta match them, but the prices are still really high. Uh, I spent 1.8 million on synthetic resin earlier, and it was about the price that everybody else was selling for it, so, you know, a little 1.8 million as a little bonus, as a passive thing that your submarines occasionally bring in. That's not bad either. It's an amazing way to passively farm Gil. And this is a huge advantage that only free companies can have, because personals can't do submarines. 
They probably should be allowed to, though. Now, here's the thing. You can't... There is a housing system that you can buy, right? There is a housing system that you can buy at any time, an instanced housing system. It's called the apartments. Now, the apartments are small houses, but without basements. So you just have, like, the first floor of a small without anything else. And that's all you get. That's all, that, that's it. That's the only thing that you can get, and that's the only thing you can ever get on demand. So you can never have, like, if you wanted to, like, creatively express yourself with how you wanted to design something, you are always going to be limited by the size of the apartment or the size of the house you have. And housing is now completely RNG. Uh, it used to be, like, uh, you can go back and watch the placard clicking streams. Y you can see what it used to be like. They made the change for the better. However, with it being a random lottery system, there's no guarantee that you ever, like, get anything. And I mean, there was never any guarantee to begin with, but, like, also, you know, it's a little, like, how do I put it? When you were clicking in the placard, you had the, you know, the chance that if it went live at that moment, you would buy it. But with the lottery system, you just have to get lucky. You just have to roll the dice and win. Like, that's it. And because of how limiting housing is, you can't even factor into, like, the, the human into it, you know? Where it's like, how because here's the thing when i was clicking on the placards for like a week straight right like all my free time was spent clicking on placards there would be there would be people i would recognize but then there would be people who i would recognize and then i wouldn't see them for like you know uh like a week or i wouldn't see them for like a few days and then they'd be back later it's because obviously people have to take breaks and so I don't know. Like, uh, listen, obviously, I am never saying bring the placard clicking back, because that was hell. That was literal hell, and it was terrible design, and the developers should be ashamed of themselves for even having that as a thing in the first place. But with the lottery system, it's just you bet, and then you claim it. It's very, like, it's also a bad system, and it means that <laughs> you're basically, uh, gonna get screwed a lot of the time especially if you're a solo player like let's say you're a solo player that wants to design a house right well what are you gonna do like how are you gonna get a house you're, you're gonna you're gonna bid on one when there's another one okay cool have fun checking the housing districts every fucking day or uh being in the housing discord and have somebody else do it for you and then like you find the house that you want, and you bid on it, and then you don't get it <laughs> because it's in a Omni Ward, and an FC put like ten tickets down on it. You know, it's like there's not really anything that you can do. There's no way you can improve your chances. It's just like if there's ten bids and you're one of them, is is just get lucky, Lamau. Like that's it. And so it means that there there's no way that you can ever like force getting a house. Right, there, there's, like, nothing that you can do to, like, brute force getting a house. And you could kind of do that with placard clicking if you were a degenerate like me, I guess. But, you know. It's just a horrible system all in all. And just because we have a mansion doesn't mean it's a good system. It, just because the person that you're watching on your screen has a mansion doesn't mean that it's fair because like there there were 14 tickets on that plot on this placard so it's like that's people who uh, like th those are fcs and individual well it's this is an fc only ward but those are free companies that might not have had a house to begin with okay so they might not even had the ability to use submarines like we do so we had an innate advantage of already being homeowners that, that they don't. And so... And so... It's like, it's so fucked. And the thing is, 
we don't have to pay to build a hall. We don't have to pay like to relocate. We actually get a refund on our on our house because yeah, whatever. It's like it really is fucked because we're going to have like okay, in 7 years when a new housing district comes out. In 7 years when a new housing district comes out. What's going to happen is the people who are going to be able to move into this new housing district, unless that, like, if the devs keep going in the way that they're going, the people who are going to move into this new housing district are going to be people who already have mansions and they just want a better one. Now, is that inherently wrong? Not really, but it means that what's going to happen is after all the rich people who have had houses for like seven years at that point or maybe even longer uh, are then going to spend all that money on moving into these new housing districts and then houses like the one that we just got are going to open up because that's literally what happened this was a, a mansion for somebody and it could have been a personal mansion because the wards are changed recently. So this wasn't always an FC only ward. This could have been a personal or an FC uh, mansion. And the people who had it got tired of it. And then they packed up shop and then they moved to a better mansion. That's the only reason why we were able to bid on this one is because it was somebody's like, you know, they, they, they hated this place. They didn't want to live here anymore. So they just left and then we picked up the scraps. And so, again, like in seven years, when the next housing district comes around and it has cooler mansions, we might put a bid in for that. And when we move out, some other FC is going to have a chance at getting this place. And, you know, it, it, it is what it is. Like, it just feels kind of bad. Because it's this, it's this really cool feature. Like, housing is neat. And having a house that belongs to a physical part of the world is actually pretty cool. But it's not really that, because it's just an instance ward that people never have to go to. There's never any point to go into a ward unless you already need to go there for like an FC event, or you're going to a cafe, or you're going to an event, like a player run event. There's no purpose to the goblet. There's no purpose to the lavender beds or the mist or whatever. There's nothing to do here outside of what players do themselves. So you're never going to have that moment because it could be really cool, right? To have like a house in the game and people can walk by your house because it's a physical thing that exists. And so if people are in the neighborhood, they're going to see your house and they might even walk inside to say hello. That's a really cool fantasy, and that's something that would really work. The problem is... The big problem is that the only way people will ever come by is if you give them a reason to. And so that kind of, in my opinion, defeats the whole purpose. So housing is just a complete and utter fucking mess. And so again, I want to point out, there's only 180 goblet mansions in the entire game for your server. Okay, obviously every server has 180 goblin, goblet, goblin? Goblet mansions. <laughs> so there's a lot of them. But you know, if you look at that one website that doesn't provide any sources for, you know, it's numbers <laughs> uh, or methodologies for calculating those numbers. Uh, Coral has 600,000 people, 600,000 characters. Now some of those might be alts. But this is a game where you can play every job and every class on the same character, and that is easier and more beneficial than starting a new character from scratch, okay? So, it's... So, people tend to make alts for, like, extra inventory space, but that's not something that most people will do, you know? So, the best way that I can put it is that there's probably not 600,000 people playing in Coral, okay? There's probably not. But there's a lot of people, but, you know, there's a lot of people in Coral. And if you wanted to live in the Goblet for some reason, I just wanted a mansion, I'll take what I can get. But if you wanted to live in the Goblet for some reason, you can't do that, because we're living here. It's full. You know, that's the, that's the point. 
the I I think it's uh, that that's the point is what I've been trying to say this whole fucking video. I just got it. I got my own. I got there eventually. If you want to live somewhere, it's fucking impossible. Okay, you like that fucking Shiragane beach house? Get owned, nerd. 80 people bid for it. <laughs> what are you supposed to do? You can't do anything. There's nothing that you can do. So the only way that you're going to get a house in Final Fantasy XIV is if you're willing to take the scraps that people leave behind. If there's a house that you really like, you're never getting it. Because if you really like it, chances are... 90 other people like it, and they have more money than you, and they have more guild than you, and they have alts who will roll for it too, because people are fucking psychotic. And by alts, I mean like alternate accounts that are paying like a separate subscription, because as far as I know, you can only put one ticket per account. So like, I couldn't go on one of my alts and then place like another bid. I had to get an FC member to do it for me. Um... But, like, I mean, seriously, it's so fucking horrible because you, like, you're literally forced to live wherever everyone else in your server hates. <laughs> and so, even though we have a mansion and it's gonna look cool as fuck when it's done, we've been planning out designs, we have somebody in the FC who actually likes interior decorating, so he's gonna go for it and do it big. And we're gonna give him all the money in the world to do it, okay? <laughs> Even when our house is fucking awesome, and we we all love it, and we all hang out here, we are still in a place that our server considers to be the worst fucking housing district in the game. Nobody actively nobody actively wants to live here, and so that's the reason why we have this house. The reason why I got the original house is because somebody like the the plot what was it uh, plot ten in Shiragane. The reason why I got that house is because somebody who lived there was like, ah, oh, this shit sucks, and then they saved up money and then they moved. <laughs> and so it's like, now I like that place. I moved the FC because even though I like that house and I like that location, we just needed a large because... Like, I, it, it, it's a status thing, right? Like, you want your FC to be taken seriously. And so by acquiring a mansion, that's like, hey, look at me. I have something that very, very few people actually have. Uh, and also, there's a practical sense to it. I wanted a bigger venue space. Like, a medium would have been fine in that regard, but I just wanted a bigger venue space to host events, especially, like, hiding a prop object uh, events. Those were really fun. And with a mansion, there's so many places you could hide shit. Um, but ultimately, what I'm getting to that's important here is... In Final Fantasy XIV, you cannot live where you want. And I've already said this, so people probably get it. But that's just... That, that's just the thing that I don't like, is... I'm not living in the Goblet because I love the Goblet and it's my favorite housing district. I'm living in the Goblet because it's the only mansion that my FC could w could realistically bid on to have a chance at winning. Because yeah, we could have bid on the fucking Shiragane beach house that I really like. Yeah, we could have done three tickets on that. Three tickets out of over 50? And that was three days ago? It probably had 60 or 70 near the end. There's no fucking way that we could have won that. And here's the thing, we're now in a position where we have a mansion, we made it, we have the best, okay? A mansion in the Goblet is the same thing as the mansion in Shiragane. There's no functional difference between the two. So we are at the, as far as gameplay advantages from owning a house, we're at the top. We have three gardening plots. Uh, we can do the most efficient Thavnarian onion farming in the game. And so that means that we can just willy-nilly roll for any mansion that ever pops up, and we have no consequences for this. Because if we lose, we already have one, who cares? If we win, well hey, we now have a better one. And then somebody has to take the shitty plot that we leave behind. Now, I have come around on this, okay? I've come around on this. 
if you'll uh, indulge me for a moment here. I do need to end the video soon. I have something I need to do. But I actually think this location specifically is really nice. Okay? I actually think this location is really nice. Because, okay, this walk up to the mansion is fucking awful. Like, coming at it from the side like this. Except, we're going to be doing the Forge House. And the Forge House basically has this entire half cut off right it's very weird it doesn't in fact it doesn't affect the inside at all it's much bigger on the inside than it is outside some like doctor who shit or something i don't know i never watched the show um but about right here where this half of the house would be is this massive open area that will have like all this crafting and forge shit it's gonna look amazing and so it's gonna be a lot better because we're gonna have that because this is awful like this is fucking awful like the walk up here is fucking horrible okay absolutely absolutely terrible with this being like all open space it's gonna be much better but and all, like honestly it should just like open up here like i don't know how they would do it maybe have it go like down there and then you could go in here or continue down i don't know the the entrance should be right here we're going to be able to make it work because of specifically of what I want to do. I want to have people, like, crafting right here. And then if we have anybody who comes up to, like, buy stuff, they'll just walk in and they'll see the forge. And that'll be really cool. But, um, you see, the thing is, I, I think that the actual, like, opening for most FC houses is going to be bad. But it's going to look really good when we change our housing exterior. But this part right here... I actually really like the design here because we get our own little patio, our own little walkway all the way down here. And then we get to the market board, right? We get to our market board and we get to the Aetherite crown, which is over there. So this market board is the closest one for like this, like these subset of houses. Like, okay, that market board's probably a little closer to 42. But it's actually, I think, 43. You could probably make an argument and just jump over the wall and come down to this market board. But especially for these clusters of houses right here, this is your location, right? Like, this is where you're going to be. This is where you're going to be hanging out, especially if you're in this house right here or this house over here. And so, and this house too, absolutely. The people who are, like, right next to us. Um... You're all going to be hanging out here. So this is a great place to actually meet your neighbors. This is a great place. And we have a view of that. We actually have the high ground. We actually can, like, look. It, it's look who... Oh, no. Oh, no. I know why people hate the goblet now. It's just a lot of this, isn't it? Oh, no. Okay, I'll pretend that they don't have a chocobo stable until I unfortunately remember. But uh, also the giant-ass windmills are fucking cool. Look at that thing. Look at that fucking windmill over there. That's ridiculous. But, uh, oh, sorry. I had the map off screen. But yeah, th this cluster of houses right here are all going to come to this market board and this bell and this Ethernet shard. So it's a great place to, to meet people. It's a great, like, when people come here to this part of the goblet, this is where the foot traffic is going to be. And so... It's gonna, like, I, I like that a lot, actually. I do. Uh, this is completely fucking useless, by the way. There's literally nothing over there, and you can't go past those gates. Because the goblet fucking sucks. <laughs> but I think that if you were going to live somewhere in the goblet, this is actually a pretty good location. I like the market board, I like the bell, I like the Ethernet shard. It connects up to a bunch of houses, it feels good. Now, just don't worry about the fact that your neighbors are your your neighbor's stuff is materializing in and out of existence also i want to point out that they're like weird I, I have no idea what they're doing over there with the floating sky bridge but that pops in faster and they're all the way over the fuck there that pops in faster than their chocobo thing right there like can you believe that Anyways, the goblet fucking sucks. Don't move here. It's terrible. Go to a good ward, except you can't. You'll move into this house once we move out of it and get a good house <laughs> when a new housing district comes out in like eight fucking years. Because the thing is, they just, um, they just increased the size of all the wards. 
So it's like, they're not going to add new housing for a while. Like, they increased the size of all the wards from 20... Like, was it 25 to 30, or is it 24 to 30? I don't actually remember. But they added, like... I, I think they... It was 24, right? Because they added six new wards. One of them for free companies, one of them for personals, and then one and then four of them for everybody. And then they reshuffled all the other housing districts so that just so that you could suffer, you know? Just just to say fuck you. Um But yeah, anyways. That's that's me. I've ranted about housing for almost 40 minutes, and ultimately my main complaint is that. You can't live where you want because everybody else wants to live where you want to live. And if you are homeless, if your FC is homeless, if you as a person are homeless, then you have no way of safely getting a house that you like because you'll be homeless for 8 million years. And so you just have to take the like bottom scraps that like everybody leaves to you. And I kind of hate that. Like a lot because it means that unless you're willing to settle for an apartment which can't do submarines by the way um yeah it's just uh the situation is in remiss it's all fucked it's terrible even and uh i mean just because we made it and just because we have a mansion doesn't mean that it's good it's actually still the worst system in existence and it's designed to benefit people who already have houses so, you basically go from homeless, to a small, to a house that you actually like, and then once you're in the house that you actually like, or, and by that I mean the size of house that you actually like, then, you can then, and only then, start hunting for the house that you actually want your FC to be lived in. Like, you actually want to be your FC's forever home. It's a multi-year project. And it's a pain in the ass all the way through. Especially because the world keeps, like, fucking collapsing, and there's, like, horrible things happening in real life, so the developers feel obligated to suspend auto-demolition. Which, I mean, I, I respect that. I, I do think that if there's a horrible thing that happens that prevents people from going into their house once every 30 days, they shouldn't lose their in-game house because they were literally incapable of, like, checking in on it. I think that's fair. Yeah, I think that's fair completely. Um, now, do I wish that horrible shit in the world stopped happening so the developers would stop suspending uh, auto-demolition? Yeah, because auto-demolition is designed for that, so that if people don't use their houses anymore, uh, you, their houses will be freed up. So somebody else who wants that house can move in. Uh, but because of the world, TM, uh, there's a lot of times where the housing auto-demolition has just been suspended for, like, half a year, <laughs> multiple times. So it's like, you know, it is what it is. Thanks for watching. If you made it to the end of this video, I, I don't, I, I don't know why. Like, most of the people watching this do not care about Final Fantasy XIV in the slightest. But yeah, you did it. You made it. I, I I don't have anything to offer you. You you made it to the end of the episode. That's that's pretty cool. Stay safe out there.